calculus sketch graph from data in the table. Typically in calculus, we're more prone to sketch a graph from a function. In this case, we have this table, and we're going to use this table, the data therein, to sketch a graph of the table. And the main technique we're going to do to, or to use is one that we've talked about in class where if we draw this, if we draw a circle on an XY coordinate plane, we label the quadrants of the circle to let us know what the basic curve of a graph will look like. And on the quadrant one, the curve as we go left to right is going down and is also concave down, so we say negative, negative. If we take quadrant two, as we go from left to right, we are increasing, but we are concave down. And then in quadrant three, we are decreasing, but we are concave up. In quadrant four, we are increasing and concave up. So this is going to help us as we sketch our curve. And then, um, and what I've done, they give us the, the points. The first thing we're going to do is, is look at the points. They give us twice differentiable function. So we have one point here, f of negative 3 equals 0. And then we have f of negative 2 equals 3. f of negative 1 equals 0. f of 1 equals negative 2. And finally, in the text, f of 3 equals negative 2. And what I've done, as I get to the subsequent page here, I labeled on the sketch of the graph portion all these points from that table that we are going to connect appropriately with what we find as we go from A to B to C to D. So uh, the first thing we're asked is what are the intervals of increasing decreasing? My recommendation is to, as we've done in class, draw a number line. And on this number line, we place our critical numbers, which are given as negative, as we go left to right, negative 2, negative 1, 1, and then 2. And of course, to the, to the right, to, to the left, we're going to have negative 3 at the extremity and positive 3 at this extremity. So we're going to see what happens here. And above this number line, we put in f, f prime, and below we put in f. So we're going to see what happens in these intervals. So what we're going to do first is take this f prime f prime row and we see between x equals negative 3 and x equals negative 2 we have a plus sign okay and this plus sign we're going to put right here and what that means is underlying is the, the graph is going to be increasing over this interval from x equals negative 3 to negative 2 and then next we go from the next interval between negative 2 and negative 1, we are also increasing. Okay, and oops. It would help if I would circle the right things. I did not circle the right thing, did I? Okay, we are increasing here. That is correct, but then between x equals negative 2 and negative 1, we are actually decreasing. Okay, decreasing. 
going down like this. And then between negative 1 and 1, we are also decreasing. Between 1 and 2, we are increasing. And finally, between 2 and 3, we are decreasing. So intervals of increasing, decreasing. Well, we are increasing on, and we just put the intervals in place here. We just look for the up arrows. We're increasing on negative 3 to negative 2, and also on 1 to 2. And why? Because f prime is greater than 0. Next, where are we decreasing? We are decreasing on all these other intervals here. Negative 2, negative 1, union. negative 1 to, ne to, to 1 and finally from 2 to 3 now and, and why because f prime is less than zero. Now one thing you can do if, if you want to, we're actually increasing or decreasing all the way from negative two all the way to one. And the reason is because we we have this critical number here, but the function never stops decreasing in this interval. But that's that's a fine point. Next, a value of x, if any, where f has relative extrema. Well, what we're looking for is changes. So we are changing. Uh, we have, and you can sort of just connect what's going on up here from negative, from negative 2. We're going like this. So, and also at 2. So we have relative max at x equals negative 2 and also x equals 2 because f prime changes from positive to negative. And where do we have relative minimum? Here at, at 1. Why? Relative minimum at x equals 1 And why? Because f prime changes from negative to positive. Okay, next we go on to part C on this other page. Intervals where f is concave up, down. And what I'm going to do is go back to this prior page just so we can, uh, I want to put a number line right below this one here that addresses that concavity. And we have the same, same numbers. We're looking at negative 3 on the left and then negative 2, negative 1, 
one, two, three. And this time, above the line, we're going to put f double prime of x, and below we're going to put f of x here. And this time we're looking at concavity. I know it's a little busy here, but hope you can see this. So now we're looking between negative 3 and negative 2. We have this negative sign, which means we're concave down in this interval. Between negative 2 and negative 1, we are also concave down or negative. Between negative one and one, we are we have a po positive value, so we are concave up in this interval here. Between one and two, we have a negative sign, so we are concave down. Between two and three, we have a negative sign, so we are also concave down. So in these four intervals, in these five total intervals, we see that four of those five intervals are concave down. So let's go ahead and, and list what that is. So we say f, f is concave down. looking back here we have all these negatives so we have all these different intervals could be a lot of things here we have negative 3 to negative 2 union uh, negative 2 to negative 1 union we have 1, 2, union, and finally, 2 to 3. And why? Because f double prime of x is less than 0. And then we have f is concave up. And the only remaining interval, which is going to be negative 1 to 1, because f, f double prime is greater than 0. Okay, and then d, values of x, if any, where f has a point of inflection. So let's just look. We're looking for changes. We're either looking from changes from down to up or up to down, and we see them only in two places, here at negative 1 and 1. So we just say uh, F has points of inflection at x equals negative 1 and x equals 1 because f double prime changes from negative to positive or from positive to negative. So now we're left with sketching the graph of f. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, what we're going to do is just look at the pieces first, what they're going to look like. And what we do is we compare these intervals if we look at the f prime number line and the f double prime number line, we have f prime being plus and f double prime being minus. So what does that look like? It looks like this upper left part of the circle. So it's going to look like this. So I'm just drawing what the curve looks like above. 
between negative 2 and negative 1, we have minus minus. So it's going to look like this piece on the upper right. And then between negative 1 and 1, we have minus plus, which is going to look like this lower left piece. Okay, that's what it's going to look like. And then between 1 and 2, we have plus minus, which is going to look like this one again, the upper left. And then finally, we have between 2 and 3, negative, negative, which looks like this upper right piece, like this. And now all we have to do is put these pieces, uh, what the, draw, try to draw a smooth curve of what they look like. What I'm going to do is try to draw, so we have this piece here where we're increasing, but concave down, it's plus minus, and go like this. Now another thing you have at, at x equals negative 2, you have f prime being 0, which means we're going to have to have a horizontal tangent there. And then we're going, we have a horizontal tangent or a maximum there. So we're still we're decreasing but concave down. So that's what this piece looks like here. And, and so uh, between negative 1 and 1, we are decreasing but concave up. Let's take a look at that. Decreasing concave up. And so it's going to look like this. Okay, we have concave up decreasing. And then in this piece here, this next piece, we're going to be increasing, but concave down, just like the first one we drew. And so that's what this one's going to look like. And finally, between 2 and, and 3, and I mislabeled this, didn't I? Let me fix that. This last point here is going to be 3, negative 2. Okay, that looks better. Okay, back we are. Go like this. So, let's see if I can draw it a little more neatly. Let's just verify from the table a couple more things. We see this sharp, uh, we have this change here. It looks like a corner at x equals 1. And where that's corroborated is that we have does not exist. F, F prime does not exist there. Why? Because we have a corner. The slope is not, we don't have a smooth curve. And also we have a horizontal tangent line at, at where x equals 2. So it's all corroborated here. So I hope this has been helpful to you in terms of just looking at a table and getting from that table to be able to sketch a graph that matches the data in the table. I hope this, again... Good luck and thanks for viewing.